I could stand here all day, but the hardest part to learn is right here. So I'm heating a little bit past the scarf on one side because that's where I'm going to bend it so that they'll touch. And then on the welded heat, we'll well heat just the welded area. Or the scarf area. So the scale that's formed on the, on the main part of that here, is that not in the beer as well? The what? Scale. Yeah, so what the Porax does is it's basically a, an acid. Well, so it's actually... It etches and cleans that, yeah. Convert whatever iron oxide you have there. Okay. I mean, you don't want coal in there, but... Uh, so you can see how just doing that brought one side up pretty easily without having to worry about the spring. I'll do a little bit more cold on this side and then bring them right together. So you can kind of see how I've got the thick parts. Make sure, yeah. So the thick parts are stacked on top of each other. It's a little bit, a little bit, but um, so. So, yeah. So the two thick parts are on top of each other. That'll give me more material for a, a, a solid weld. Um, and that's kind of where I want them to be. Take one more little bit to make sure they're in line left to right as well. So what was the reasoning behind having the gypsy glue like paper? The lips? Yeah. Um, so the lips just allow you to Better kind of blend it in. It in. Okay. Um, if you don't put the lips in, what happens is that square corner actually cuts the surface of the other material, and you're always left with a cold shell. Okay. The bend will work itself out once. So what's the reason for it? Why not? Uh, the half face blow. Yeah. The that little notch. Yeah. More than yeah. Okay. So the notch uh, is just a kind of a locator. Okay. So if I if I just draw it here. So um, kind of here is one piece, and then I've got my other piece. Uh, yeah, and kind of like that. So there's a little bit of material here that overlaps, and this gives you kind of the greatest amount of thickness to start hammering, right? It gives you the more, more thing. As these come down, um, that'll allow these guys to like slowly join in before you get there. That makes sense. And, and, and uh, like you said originally, the fact that the notch kind of locates the Yeah, yeah, so I do that. You don't have to do it as much for this ring because everything is locked into place. Um, but more so when you're taking two separate pieces together, it'll be a place to feel as well as see. Um, I try and keep kind of the scarves maintained, doing it the same way for both. I think that if they were just a scarf like this, and you tried to hammer it together, um, you wouldn't have enough. Uh, basically what happens is you get a tack weld on the first few hits, kind of keeps it from slipping. In this situation, I it would slip and be too thin too quick. So I'm going to get this hot, and then we'll apply the flux. Now the reason that we apply the flux hot is so that it sticks to the metal, because the flux will start to melt. So I want a, a, at least an orange type heat.
cut basically an orange here. Up. I like to spread it all kind of around the joint. It's hard to get laid into the gap. Yeah, and I'm not so much worried about the gap uh, because the, the parts that will melt will uh, use the capillary reaction and suck themselves in uh, as it melts away. Uh, mostly we're trying to keep the and then the little metal bits help seal kind of all of the seams that go around. If it's borax, pour it all around and we'll watch it. Uh, actually, John Switzer, the, that YouTube video where he does a little experiment and he shows all the little reactions in different ways. It's really quite interesting. And it does seem to appear to come through. More than you expect. Okay, so come on up and let me show you the fire here. So what I'm working for here is that bright yellow that's at the bottom of the fire is the color I want. Uh, so my ring here is a is not quite as is darker than that bright bright yellow at the bottom. So I want to take it to that temperature if that makes sense. So when I'm looking at it and it almost disappears in the fire, like it's the same color as the back, then I know I'm ready to go. And usually I'll see one or two little sparks starting, so I'm almost there, it's like I'm about to burn. Kind of the price is right rules. Get it as hot as you can without going over. And then we get our hammer ready, and we're just about there. We'll come on back over here. Material. So I'm staying a quarter inch on this. You guys have a little more wiggle room because it's three eighths. Uh, but you can see I've gone much wider. And now the next few heats, I'll take that back down to one inch. Um, and you can see we've got most of that seam. The seams are still there a little bit. Um, but we're going to take another heat and finish it up. Okay. So I will. Uh, because it's now good and stuck, I'm just going to switch to the borax because it's cheaper. And uh, oh no, wait, it is cheaper, but so am I. So thrifty, thrifty. That's thrifty, not cheap. That's right. So I'm going to take it back up to that temperature. Um, I like to. Leave a little bit of coal on top. I took the coal off so you guys can see the color. But it's best uh, to leave the coal on top because every house is warmer if it has a roof. Walls help too. Walls help too. That's why it's not that warm in here. That's true. In our case, which is a good thing. Alright, so I'm going to take the pot on your well here at the, uh, at the horn. Uh, take the sides down now. I just focused on one side first and then the other. And once again, I don't want to go too thin here either. One inch thickness. You see a few little sparks there? Look. Sorry. Look, we'll flatten that out. So you can do it over the horn, you can do it over the heel if you want. Doesn't really matter because we'll screw up the ring. This is 
kind of one of the beauties of the horn. Okay. So there you go. It's just that easy. Super easy. Super easy. Super easy.